of, of relatively homogenous galvanised people together, um, galvanised around your organisational values, getting closer and closer to your clients, you'll probably do relatively well out of this current economic circumstance. So when I say commitment to management, that's what I'm talking about. Small firms are notorious for winging this, by the way. Now, clearly, you've all, I mean, you're all the great conference attenders. You've all been involved in practice management. You've all been touched by people, not literally, but you've all been touched by people like me and, and my colleagues um, in the, the, whose profession is consulting and training lawyers in this area. Um, this has been a compulsory unit of study to get a practicing certificate in most of the eastern states of Australia for over 15 years. Yet still we see small firms who suffer that failure to implement concept. It's basically because of a lack of commitment to management. Because frankly, if I gave most of you a little bit of a scratch below the surface, deep down, we don't actually think it's real work. It's nowhere near as important as doing all the client stuff. And the person, if it's you, um, bad luck, but it's the person who happens to be the managing partner um, generally in a small partnership, most people would think, oh, well, Harry does that because he likes it. Um, the firms who are going to come out of this particularly well are the firms who are going to invest appropriately in, um, in management and leadership. So commitment to management last time was a major differentiator, and it's indeed out of the last recession that the major corporate firms in Australia grew, and I think it'll be a differentiator this time. The other thing that's going to be very important is client mix for a number of reasons. Now, on face value, this seems cynical, but it's not. Um, academics re and, um, and private researchers and indeed most commentators talk about the legal profession as being one homogenous thing. In Australia, it's not. There are two very, very distinct industries in the law. There is a top and the upper end of the mid-tier legal profession, which is essentially a totally commercialised business-to-business delivery model. Then there's essentially um, larger second tier firms and smaller firms who service an SME marketplace and a private client marketplace. Although it seems like a cynical observation, it's actually a factual observation, that dividing line comes when people stop paying with other people's money and start paying with their own. That has a material impact during recessionary times. We will see a number of things happen. In the mid-tier in Australia, you will see a flight to perceived value. Partners, we're already starting to see it. Partners from larger firms who hitherto have had to, as a result of their pricing structures, price their services out in excess of $650 an hour, will have clients who say, sorry, mate, like you, like your team, that's too much. During recessionary times, as we're seeing in Australia now, you will increasingly see um, success packaged up to be evil. All right, if Harry Kiel signs for £64 million tomorrow, he'll be a hero on the front page of the Courier Mail. But none of you would be game enough to go to a dinner party and tell them that you were a CEO. They'll throw tomatoes at you, probably put you in the stocks at the end of the table. Um, we're going to start to see commercial success increasingly packaged up to look like dishonesty. Um, it just sells papers. You'll see that more and more. So that will produce in, I mean, I could lead you through the cascade of sequence of events, but I'll spare you. Ultimately, that will mean that a lot of, of, um, of organisations who buy legal services through per centralised purchasing offices will start to shop at different ends of the market. And we'll start to see traditional purchases up here coming into that end of the market because greater perceived value will sit there. Um, at the same time, right at the very top here, although I don't know how many people are here from those firms, but right amongst the top providers in Australia, if we pick the largest three or four firms, um, you're going to see a flight to quality. So the fact that, that um, re-regulation is a, um, something that's germane to the back end of every commercial downturn, and this time in particular because it's, it's suggested that it's a lack of regulation that's got us where we are, Clearly, um, governments all over the world are going to be seeking the advice of international law firms who um, are well placed to deliver it. So we'll see a, a flight to quality up here, we'll see a flight to value here. So the people who are at most threat in this market are the ones who sit here, so at the um, emerging second tier firms, the bottom end of the second tier, 
I think we'll find that they are in a very, very priced competitive market. The other thing that's interesting about this segment of the marketplace is at the last recession, and it's a little bit esoteric and a bit of a side, but at the last recession, a substantial majority of those firms all shared profits equally. Now they share profits on the basis of performance. So you're only really as good in a strategic firm, you're only as good as your last rolling three-year average. In a sharper firm, you're only as good as last year. That's going to have a little bit of an internal impact, but as I say, it's probably just voyeuristic interest more than how you guys. This segment of the market here, so general small firms, where lawyers have, are yet to specialise, a typical high street practice where you're doing mum and dad work for mum and dad clients, partner incomes around the $150,000 to $200,000 mark, working particularly hard, struggling with the talent crisis, they're the firms who are going to find it the most difficult because 50% of their practice reconveyancing is just going out the door. Um, a lot of that, that stuff that just relies on commercial activity normally contracts significantly. So the enduring services in the small firm market, typically we see PI firms do relatively well. It's not true to say that it's counter-cyclical, as though it, it seems to be intuitively the case, um, but they do relatively well. Family law firms do relatively well, but debtors go up significantly. You can expect them to grow by about 60 per cent. Commercial litigation and insolvency, obviously, most of that activity in the quality end of the market seems to sit within the, the ranks of the mid-tier firms. Um, so obviously commercial litigation and insolvency lawyers are, are relatively busy at the moment. Construction litigation starting to take off in Brisbane and in Sydney and in Melbourne. Um, and commercial work, we're going to see a big infrastructure spend. There's no doubt about that. This is a very good time to be close to government. Firms who are close to government are at the moment doing extremely well. And firms who are able to, to package and present a brand that says, we are a big firm alternative to pick up that client base that are fleeing to perceived value um, will do relatively well. And I don't think that'll be sp uh, size specific, but it will be specialty specific and the brand of the individual partners will be particularly important. And of course, commercial transactions are going to pick up. They won't grow exponentially, but they'll grow at a shallow growth curve like that. Um, commercial transactions will pick up uh, when the bargain hunters start to come into the market. But bear in mind that bargain hunters are bargain hunters. They tend to hunt for everything as a bargain. So legal services won't be an exception to that. Now, in, um, just to look at a couple of strategic things. First thing I, I reckon you want, if you come out of this with a little very short to-do list, your first thing is to stick to the knitting. Law firms have always done well as a result of their ability to put systems in place that are designed to get good quality work, to do it, to bill it and to collect it. It's important during recessionary times that you invest in those systems, obviously. So moving files through your practice as expeditiously as possible is what will produce the profit, not the file volume. File velocity is very strongly correlated to profit. File volume has a very poor correlation to it. Similarly, to shorten your cash flow cycle, so your ability to bill your files and collect the dough is going to be very important. There's a substantial majority of commercial Australians now, for example, who use the tax office as a credit as, as a, um, you know, a bank. If you don't pay your tax, they'll lend you the money effectively at somewhere between 7 and 12.5 per cent, depending on your relationship. Well, where else are you going to get money like that? You don't want your clients to treat you like that, all right? So, when you're taking instructions, very important to reinforce the need to be paid um, and being relatively vigilant about it. Strategy, I think, is probably going to be important, but only in so far as it relates to product offering. Now, I want to talk about this and I'll come back to the rest of it. The firms who do particularly well are going to be firms who, let me go back a couple of steps. Law firms, I'm sorry, my pens aren't really all that thick, so you're going to have to squint a bit. Law firms traditionally have always grown and developed along an exponential growth curve. So they'll, over a fairly extended history, they normally follow a curve along that sort of a locus. The challenge for most of you coming from smaller to, to mid-sized firms, a lot of you have probably suburban regional partnerships, most of you have done that and most of you would sit there. And most of you would be on a trajectory that's relatively flat. 
For most of you, probably the biggest barrier to growth for the last five years has been access to talent. If that's 